Hey guys, welcome to DRP. Today we're gonna install our Hub Defender Spacer in a RV. So a couple things that you're gonna need before you get started. Um, we are going to remove the seal from the hub, so you will need a replacement seal. Today I'm actually gonna be installing our low drag bearings as well. So if you're gonna use your current bearings, then you will need uh, some form of cleaner to get the, the bearings clean so that you can re-grease them. We're gonna need some cotter pins. Some applications don't require cotter pins. They actually have a locking washer that snaps over the uh, spindle nut. Uh, we'll need a, a pair of pliers, a dead blow, some grease, a impact gun, or a ratchet so that we can remove the lug nuts, and a torque wrench so that we can torque the spindle nuts back down when we're done installing. One other thing that you're gonna need is a 332nd Allen wrench so that you can lock the set screw down after you have uh, set the spacer. For my application, I'm gonna need an inch and a half socket so that I can tighten the spindle nut back down. Currently, the spindle nut is not tight because this is how they come from the factory. The, the spindle nuts are loose, so I can simply just unscrew the spindle nut from the hub to remove it, but I will be tightening the hub back up after the um, spacer is installed, which is one of the benefits. Before you get started, you're gonna to wanna to jack the camper up. So I have, I have a jack under the U-bolts on the axle, and then I also have a jack stand beside of the jack in case the jack fails. We don't want that falling down and, and landing on our legs or, or whatever else that, that could happen. So the first thing that we're gonna do is go ahead and remove the wheel and tire from the hub so that we can access the, the hub. I have already broken the lug nuts loose while the tire was on the ground, so now I can go ahead and use my impact gun to completely remove the lug nuts. Now I've got to remove this outer hub cap so that I can access the spindle nut. This job is gonna be pretty dirty. There's gonna be a lot of grease in this hub, so um, ample amount of paper towels, rags, gloves is gonna be a big benefit while doing this. And there's the grease. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna grab a few rags, I'm gonna wipe the uh, grease off, and then I'm going to remove the cotter pin from the spindle, which will allow me to remove the nut, which we can see is, is loose. Then the hub assembly will come off. So I'm gonna grab some gloves and go ahead and start this process. This one, they've got the cotter pin jammed in there pretty good. So now I'm removing the cotter pin. This particular hub is a Easy Lube, I believe is the name of it. Uh, so it does have a grease fitting in the center, which I will be deleting just by removing because I'm going to pack the bearings actually using our bearing packer. So what you're gonna see once, once we remove this is there's gonna be a lot of grease in this hub. All the grease creates extra friction and extra extra heat within the, the hub itself. So it's not always um, more grease is, is the way to go. Now I'm backing the spindle nut off. I'm gonna lay that to the side. And then there is a backing washer behind the spindle nut. So I'm just gonna wiggle the hub until that washer uh, comes off and the outer bearing is coming with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the spindle down here so I can remove all of the old grease from the snout itself. Now this does not have to be done, but I'm going to go ahead and remove this grease fitting as I will not be using it um, uh, any, any longer. The next thing that we need to do is remove the seal from the back side of the hub. And by doing that, you can have a punch, anything to tap on the top bearing. Now, if you're reusing your bearings, you wanna be careful by doing this because you could damage the bearings. So just be sure that you're hitting on the back side of the bearing, which is the inner race of the bearing. And I'm not talking about the actual race of the hub. This is the inside here. Of, of the bearing. So I am not going to be reusing these bearings, uh, but I'm still going to try to hit the, the inside of the bearing just so that I can inspect it and make sure that uh, everything was good to begin with. 
So I'm just going to take and tap on, on each side of the bearing across from each other. That way the seal will not get, get caught by trying to remove too much of one side and then it should drop down. And there it went. And as you can see, there's a lot of grease just on this ratchet extension that I have. There's still a lot in this hub. Again, I had checked this hub many times on trips that we've done over the summer and it is producing some heat. We've seen where installing these hub defenders and, and even the, the bearings as well takes, takes a lot of heat out of these, out of these hubs. So as we can see, this bearing, which is the inner, inner bearing, it's covered in grease. This is excessive amount of grease for this bearing. We would call this an overpacked bearing, which is, is just going to produce heat naturally because there's just a lot of friction. The heat just, just stays in the grease and in the hub, doesn't really allow it to, to dissipate. So the next thing I've got to do is remove this this crazy amount of, of grease from the hub. So at this point, it's just a matter of scooping it out and, and putting it on a paper towel. It's pretty crazy, isn't it? While I'm finishing the final touches of getting the grease out of the hub, let's talk about something that I previously mentioned, which was the hub's getting hot. So the spacer itself removes friction because number one, we're not, we're not running the spindle nut tight um, uh, and creating a bunch of bearing friction um, because now we're shoving the bearings in too far. We're running the bearing, we're running the spindle nut tight and still allowing the spacers to run at their correct position. So not over pressing the, the, the bearing in too far. I know if you've ever installed bearings, you've tightened the spindle nut down, spun the hub, and the hub barely spins. And so you back off and, and now you're running your spindle nut loose, but it spins, spins great. Well, as we saw when we were removing the tire is there was some in play in the hub from the spindle, spindle nut being run uh, loose. So that is a benefit of the spacer itself is that you're able to actually tighten that spindle nut down and the hub still spin free just as if the, the spindle nut was backed off. Some more benefits is that your tires are now running true. They're not towing in or out, so steering left or right. They're not cambering, so if, if you've ever had a tire on your vehicle or your camper where the inner edge is wore out or the outer edge is wore out, so that's a camber issue. Um, could be a tow issue as well. Um, so it allows the tire to run true to the axle. Um, another thing that we have found through testing is that a good quality um, uh, finished bearing like ours um, takes and removes 100 degrees of heat compared to like a standard Chinese bearing, which is what was in here. Um, so there's, there's lots of benefits to running both the, the spacer and the bearings. Um, you're going to see the, the biggest result as far as free rolling and fuel mileage with your bearing spacer or the hub defender. So now that I've got the hub clean, uh, which took about 10 minutes, I'm going to go ahead and talk about some other things that you want to be mindful of and that you want to look for while cleaning your hub. So one thing that we're not replacing today, um, unless we need to, are the races. And this is where, this is that metal piece inside of the hub that's on a taper that the bearing is riding on. So if you drop your bearing down in to the hub, this is what catches the bearing. So what we're looking for there is a good smooth surface. We don't want any pits pitting from rust. We don't want any, any type of gouges. We want that surface to look good and smooth. And uh, this, this hub has, has some good races. So 
We're, we're gonna skip changing the races today. Some applications, it may require you to change the races. If that's the case, you'll have to have a race removal tool to knock the race out. And depending on how tight the race is in there, uh, you could have to freeze your races to get them back in. And what I mean by that is literally sticking them in the uh, freezer, which makes the size of the material get smaller, which makes the install much easier. Now on automotive applications, typically you do not have to do that, but that is something to, to be mindful of. And it's a, it's a good little trick to help speed up the process. Currently what I'm doing is getting all the uh, grease off of the spindle nut here so that it doesn't transfer back to the hub. I'm taking my 332nd Allen wrench to go down in the grooves here to get the big chunks of grease off. You can wipe it down, spray it down with a form of cleaner, which would help as well, which is probably what we're gonna end up doing. Right now I'm just gonna wipe the majority of it off and then try to spray, spray it some more. Uh, so the, honestly, the, the longest part of this process is just getting the grease out of the hub from a previous user or from the factory, whatever your situation is. All right, now that we've got uh, everything clean, we're going to set the spacer uh, up with the bearings dry. So if you're reusing bearings from your hub, then you'll need to make sure that those are good and clean. And the reasoning for that is that the grease can take up slop. And uh, what we're trying to achieve is to get all of the in play out of the hub. So that, what that means is, and I'll show you an example here in just a second is that when you pull on the hub, that the hub doesn't, doesn't move or clunk. And we're also trying to make sure that we do not get preload in the hub, which is we make the spacer too short, meaning that we're actually forcing the, the bearings towards one another and creating a bunch of friction. So what we're gonna do is take the spacer and screw the spacer out so that the spacer starts off too long so that from that point, we can just start adjusting the spacer in and in and in until we get rid of all of the in play and tighten the spindle nut down so that the hub still spins freely. Okay, now that I've slid the inner bearing up on the spindle snout, I'm gonna go ahead and install my spacer followed by my hub. Next thing we're gonna do is take our outer bearing and put it in the hub along with our washer and lastly the spindle nut. What we're gonna do is go ahead and tighten the spindle nut down. Okay, so this is too short. So now what we've gotta do is remove the spacer and lengthen it because we have actually made the spacer too short. Um, as you saw, the, the hub barely moved and that's not what we're trying to achieve. So as you pull the hub, be sure to catch your washer and your outer bearing. I'm just using a screwdriver so that it falls down onto my hand and doesn't crash the ground. If it does crash the ground, you do need to inspect the bearing to make sure that the cage is not bent. Now what I'm going to do is simply take and spin the outer part of the bearing spacer out so I'm making the spacer longer. And then I'm going to reinstall everything. So notice I never removed the spacer from the hub. I just pulled the hub off made the spacer longer and now i am putting the outer bearing washer and spindle nut back on the uh, hub so we're almost there so this time i'm going to go quite a bit just so that we can demonstrate what in play looks like and what you're what you're wanting to look for during this process Now it's not even close. I don't even have to put the spindle nut on there or tighten the spindle nut all the way down. This would be excessive in play as you see that the hub is moving in and out. Uh, and that is not what you want. So from here, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can use a magnetic base dial indicator, at which point you're gonna measure over to the face of the hub, check to see how much the hub is moving in and out. 
and then you will shorten the spacer however much that it is moving. For most users, they're not going to have a magnetic base dial indicator to measure all, the, all of that. That's why we're doing all of this by feel. Now that we've got our hub reinstalled, the spacer adjusted, I've got the spindle nut tightened down. The hub still spins free. Now we want to check for in play. So what you're going to listen for is a clunking noise, which is the bearing uh, and race actually disengaging and, and engaging on itself. So we have very little in play. So what we're going to do now is make very, very small adjustments, eighth and quarter turns. So we're barely moving the spacer at this point because we've, we've got it dialed in. Now once you get the spacer dialed in and have zero in play and the hub still spins free, what you want to do is take a, a, a tape measure or ideally a dial or digital caliper and measure the height of the spacer. What this is going to do is speed up the process on your other hubs. So you're going to get the, the height of the spacer at the same height as this spindle or this hub, and it's not going to be perfect. You're going to have to still do some adjusting on it in and out, and that's, that's the benefit of this spacer is that it is adjustable. Each bearing has a different height. It doesn't matter if it's from the same manufacturer, same batch. Each race, each hub, everything is different. So that's why it's important to have these adjustable spacers is because the spacing in between each bearing face is different. But going ahead and getting that, that spacer height off of this spacer once it's properly set is important because it'll just speed the process up. So I went about an eighth of a turn there. Let's see if that was too much or not enough. It was probably too much. What you're hearing is the back side of the brake there. There is actually no in play. It does feel like a little bit of preload, but this, the hub still spins freely. So what I'm gonna do is actually take this back off one more time, back off just a touch. Um, so I went about an eighth of a turn. So I'm gonna back that off just a touch, reinstall it, make sure everything's good. And then what we will do is begin packing our bearings. So at this point, I had too much preload, I believe. So I'm gonna take and barely lengthen the spacer back out. So the hub spins free, let's check for in play. actually feel a little bit of in play so I'm going to go back to my previous setting and check it one more time and then we'll move on to the bearing packing process. Okay, so our hub still still spins free. We have no in play. We're good to go. Now it's, ta now it's time to start taking the hub back apart. We're gonna go ahead and pull the inner bearing off and the outer bearing. We're gonna go ahead and lock the spacer down and uh, uh, begin packing our bearings full of grease, okay? So now that we've got our spacing correct, I've lo locked my uh, hub defender down with the set screw that um, is in the side of it with a 332nd Allen wrench. What I want to do just to verify before I get started packing the bearings is make sure that when I tighten the set screw down that it doesn't, didn't 
change my adjustment. So still no in play, hub still rolls good and free. So now we can um, go ahead and disassemble all of this and begin packing all of our bearings and um, go through installing the seals. So we have our spacer set now. Now it's time to go ahead and start packing our bearings with grease. The traditional way is to hand pack these. Um, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use our DRP bearing packer, which uses a, a needle to inject grease in between the inner cavity here uh, inside of the, the actual rollers itself on the bearing. So what we're gonna look for is we're gonna inject grease in every cavity and we're gonna wait for it to pop out of the top of the bearing. So as soon as we see grease pop out of the top cavity here, we can move to the next space. And this makes it really nice because you're not having to put grease in your hands and you know, slam grease around uh, in the bearing trying to get it forced inside. So now that we have our inner bearing fully packed, there's actually a reason I went ahead and started with the inner bearing. And that's so that we can go ahead and drop it in the hub so that we don't install our seal without our uh, bearing being in there. More than likely, if you bought seals, you bought just enough. Um, so we wanna make sure that uh, we get the process right and we don't have to run back out to the store. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop the inner bearing in there. Now I have tested this uh, spacer. Some spacers, depending on the application, some of our racing and street performance stuff, it actually has to be installed through the backside. Not all of them, but, but some of the applications do. This one will actually go through the front, so I don't have to worry about putting the spacer in. I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the outer bearing, go ahead and start packing that, and then we're gonna go ahead and drive the seal in the hub. So with this particular bearing, it actually started squirting out of the side. So I'm gonna wipe some of this off because this is a little excessive on uh, the grease. All right, now we're going to install our um, uh, seal in the hub. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the new seal up there. I'm gonna take my uh, dead blow hammer and, and go ahead and, and tap, try to get it started in there. And the idea here is, is not to get it crooked starting off, as that will make it much more difficult to get the uh, seal installed. Okay, so now that we've got all the corners seated in there, I'm actually gonna take the seal that come out of the hub and use it to tap with. That way that I can get the, the seal fully seated into the hub without bending the seal up and causing any damage. Now that we've got that in there, what you can also purchase is a seal driver. And this seal driver is a flat piece of aluminum with a handle on it that sits perfectly down inside of the seal. And it also captures the outside, uh, which makes installing a lot more easy to keep the seal square, to hit directly in the center each time. Right now, we're not able to hit directly in the center because we have nothing in the center. But that's where the spindle snout goes. So uh, we do offer seal drivers for all types of applications. It will make this job a little easier, but you know, you can, you can use other devices as well to install uh, your seal in the hub. So now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and put the hub assembly back onto the camper here. 
followed by our bearing spacer, which we have locked down. Next is our outer bearing, followed by our washer and our spindle nut. So as you remember at the beginning of the video, the spindle nut was actually loose. Now that we have our spacer installed, we're actually gonna take and tighten the spindle nut down. If you want to torque it, you know, you can torque it to, to 30, 40 foot pounds. Some of you may or may not have a torque wrench, which you will need to torque your lug nuts back down. We're gonna go ahead and, and spin the hub, get that grease fully inside of the bearing itself, just making sure that it's, it's on every crevice of, of the bearing. So now that we have that hub installed, we can go ahead and install our cotter pin. This is a device that keeps the spindle nut from actually backing off. For this particular hub, it's, it's quite difficult as in street performance or any typical spindle, the cotter pin always goes straight across. But where this is a easy lube hub, the cotter pin comes in and then turns at a 90 and comes out the bottom side. So it's, it makes it difficult to get it fed through, but uh, with a little patience, uh, you, can, you can get there for sure. And we wanna get the head of the cotter pin down inside of the um, castle nut so that it cannot back off. So there we have it. The only other thing that we're gonna do is uh, install the, the cap back I've got to get the grease out of that and then we'll, we'll put that back on. Followed by torquing your lug nuts down on your hub. Be sure that you do that. Go ahead and tighten them down before you set the, spa uh, set the camper down with a impact gun or a uh, ratchet and socket. Uh, this, this is so that you can make sure that the hub and the wheel centers itself up onto the hub. You'll, you'll notice that on your, your wheels that where the uh, lug nuts go, there is a little taper there. And what you're wanting to make sure is that uh, the lug nut goes in the taper and isn't, isn't crooked um, as it could cause one of your wheels to become loose if it's crooked, uh, not fully seated correctly. So be sure that you tighten your lug nuts down before setting the vehicle down, whether that's a camper or a, a car truck. Then you want to go and torque the lug nuts down to whatever specifications you have for that particular application. For this application, we're going to be torquing the lug nuts down to 100 foot-pounds, as it is noted right here on the side of the camper. And um, follow the instructions. Some of them require, like this one, to recheck the uh, lug nuts every 100 miles. Uh, so just making sure that uh, nothing's moved. Um, and that everything is still tight. So we're gonna go ahead and install this, this outer cap. And now we're ready to move on uh, to the next hub after we uh, install our wheel and tire. We appreciate you guys joining us today. Uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give us a call. The telephone number is 888-399-6074. We have many different applications that fit our Hub Defender, so if you don't see your application on our website, be sure to contact us or fill out the custom bearing spacer Hub Defender form, uh, and we'll be sure to get back with you and get you going.